which is not good. Nope. Okay, I wasn't really in any serious danger there. What I had was I had a moose calf, and actually an orphan moose calf, that was being a little too curious. So moose calves in the first year are very, very curious. One of the most dangerous things you can have is a curious calf when it has a mom. This guy has no mom. So what happens is the moose will get curious, the calf, you know, come over, try to check you out, and then in turn he may squeal, run around, or mom may come check you out too, and a mom is the most dangerous, a cow is the most dangerous, more dangerous than a bull to me. But this little guy has no mom, so he's just checking people out, and he does have a mom, so mom's not telling him, hey, those are people, don't go over there. But the little guy decides he's going to push out there and push towards me, and in turn the little, or come check me out, that is, and in turn the little bull that was behind him, probably about a two-year little bull, which wasn't much of a threat either, or a problem for me, but he decided he wanted to come out too, got a little closer than I really wanted to be, just for safety measure, I backed up. And when the calf got close to the, you'll see this here in a bit, when the calf got a little close to that little bull, the little bull kind of pushed towards him and he took off, and, but he took off in my direction, so I backed up again. So we played a little game of leapfrog backwards along the trees. And a little bit about moose safety real quick. Let's cover that real fast. With moose, you always want to have a tree or a car or a pole or something you can get behind and run around. Because when moose does charge you in those cases, what you want to do is get something between you and that moose and then you'll play ring around the posy around the pole when it's happened before. So always make sure you have an egress route to a tree really close within one step or so of you. And also I had my tripod and my camera there to slow it down if it did come towards me, if a bull or a cow does come towards me, to slow them down for a bit and then I can get to cover. Now I'm going to sacrifice the camera, of course, all day long. But anyway, that's a little bit of moose safety. Keep a hole, keep a tree close to you, and don't push your luck. And I've been around these moose enough to know their behavior and where I can and can't be. Doesn't mean that they don't come out of nowhere and startle you sometimes. But anyway, so that's the best about the moose. Now, what is this video about? The video is about this right here, this Leo Photo tripod and gimbal. So Leo Photo reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to look at this tripod and gimbal. And this gimbal, the PG-1, is one I've seen before online. I've seen reviews about it and it seems really good, but I've never really put my hand on it because nobody around here, I haven't been around anybody that carries a Leo Photo in, Ang in Alaska, that is. And uh, I really like to put hands on stuff when they're a little more expensive. And so I was really, really excited to see this tripod and gimbal and see what it's like. And uh, so, yeah, they sent it to me. So I've had it for about a month. And I didn't take it to Kodiak with me when I went for the bears, but I did take it to Nome. With, and I'll tell you right now, it was really cool to be able to take this because of this case this comes in. It comes with this case. Most cases are rectangular and they take up a lot of room. They got a lot of padding on them, like gun cases. It's a lot of padding inside. This guy has just enough padding to take care of what's inside of here. And actually your tripod should be able to take a little bit of a beating anyway. So you don't need a ton of padding. And this guy was real easy to put in my check luggage. So I just threw it in the bag that I had my clothes and other stuff in since it's in this size here, not a really huge size more like a fishing rod case is what it's shaped like. And it fit in there very well. And I enjoyed having this out there to do some filming when I had those musk ox. And that video is coming soon. I'm really excited for you to see that one. That was a great trip. But anyway, to this tripod, let's go ahead and open it up, open this case up and talk about the tripod. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back out in the field and we'll just do some behind the scenes when I was out walking around photographing these moose, showing you what it's like to go out and photograph the moose, why a tripod and a gimbal's really well. And then at the end, we'll talk about what I think about this is there are pros and cons of this tripod versus others that I've used. So let's get this guy open. Let's unzip her here first. Like I said, this case is really nice. Like I said, it doesn't have a ton of padding. It's not a whole lot, but it's just enough to get the job done. And inside this case, besides the tripod and the gimbal, I like how they have this set up, you have a compartment over here on the side, a little zipper compartment, it's pretty nice. And it comes with uh, your warranty information and your, all your Allen wrenches in this little bag. Really cool. We're going to set this aside. We're going to put it back in here in a second. Also in the high side here is you get a carabiner that will attach this. And we'll talk about this in a bit later also, what this is for. And it comes with extra spike feet. It comes with rubber feet attached, and you've got spike feet you can put on top of it if you need that kind of support. Let's put this back in the zipper bag. 
get this guy out. So get this tripod out and get the gimbal head out. And I'll move this to the side, get this out of our way. We'll set the gimbal over here for now and we'll talk about the tripod. So this is the tripod. It is the Leo Photo Ranger LS364C. And this is a really good with tubular carbon fiber. Um, it is really stiff, really tough. But basically, you know, it's set up just like your basic, most of your basic tripods. Nothing extremely special on this other than its construction. Uh, give you the specs on it real quick. I've got them written down over here. So for starters, this tripod is pretty light for carbon fiber, especially for being a large tripod. This, this is a big tripod. This is a large one. 3.9 pounds is what this guy weighs. Not bad at all for the size that it is. I really like the weight of this guy. It uh, The legs will go 23 degrees, 55 degrees, and 85 degrees, just shy of 90. Most of them go 80 degrees. This one goes 85. This thing goes three inches flat when you've got this thing flattened out. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. What you do is you just take these tabs, pull them out, and then there you can move the legs all the way out. See if we got enough table room here to do this. Yes, we barely do. If I get that one all the way out, it'd be better. Come on, go all the way out. There we go. Now we're all the way. We really don't have enough table room. We almost did. But this is three inches off the ground. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. Let's fold this back up. You can hear that really nice tactile clicks when it does it. It really clicks in place real well. But yeah, like I said, it will go down to three inches when you got it laid flat. Really, really nice. The max height on this is 58.27, almost just shy of six feet. And I will tell you, this thing fully extended, putting this gimbal on top of my camera set is too high for my eye, which is awesome. Uh, you know, the small rig that I've got, it's a little short for stuff. But again, the small rig tripod that I reviewed before, that is a go out and hike with tripod. Take anywhere, go to pile on a mountain, whatever. This tripod, yes, you can hike with it, I believe. I think, like I said, this is at 3.9 pounds. This guy's 2.2 pounds. So this thing is right at just almost six pounds. Not bad. I mean, you know, it's better than most. And yes, you can hike with this guy. This is the one I would take if I know I need a tripod. Now, small rig I'll take out regardless. You know, it just it's possible I might need one or don't know if I need one. This guy I'll take out if I think I'm gonna need one or I know I need one. But it's one of those things where I'm not for sure, I may not take it with me. But I would go run back the truck and grab it if I needed it because I, this guy. Anyway, let's go back more on this tripod here. Again, how you open up the legs is just pop that out, pop it back in when you get to where you need to be. The leg locks are like all the other leg locks. What I like about these is you only have to move it just a touch, just that much, and it'll open. I mean, it's just literally, it's not even a half quarter of an inch turn. Uh, do that much, it'll open. That's really nice. When you tighten it down, it's about that much. Now, I will say, like with all twist lock legs, make sure you wrench those guys down a little bit farther. Try to, because it invariably they like to slip. When you got the clip locks, like small rigs, some others happen, once they're clipped in, they're locked. Now, with a clip one, you have to go keep tightening those legs all the time. With these twist locks, you don't have to tighten them all the time. They're just what they are is what they are. They just work as a, this little thing right here underneath here. This just gets, it's basically angled on the pipe. So as you go down, it gets tighter and tighter and just works its way up that little uh, ridge there. So that's how those tighten down. Uh, to the feet here, pretty cool. They come with rubber feet. And then like I was talking before, I'm going to go ahead and take these out of here. I had them out earlier, and, but uh, these are the spike feet. And they are about your normal size spike feet. Nothing really special in these guys. Again, how you do that is you just twist this guy off. That's it, comes out, and this one just goes right in there. Very simple. I think these are 3 8 inch mounting holes, so there's a lot of different spike feet you could buy for this guy. But that's how this spike feet works in this one. Let's go ahead and put the ball foot back on here, because that's, most of the time I run with ball feet, I very seldom, if ever, have put the spike feet on to do it. I know there's times that you could use spike feet are better than doing the uh, rubber feet, but I haven't ran into it where 
I said, well, I don't have any traction with my, my tripod, so it has always worked fine. If I put these in the right way, it'd be better. So I'm putting these back in here because uh, after this video, these will probably go in a drawer. I'll never see them again. Uh, just the way I'm with these, because I have several of these spike feet for other tripods too. So off you go over there. Let's put the ball foot back on. Pretty cool. So again, the max height on this guy at the base of this is six feet, uh, just under six feet, which is perfect. Like I said, it's too tall for me. This all collapsed correctly. At that height, I had to bring it down about four or five inches for it to be at the good eye level where I needed to see it when I was uh, shooting through the camera. The next thing about this guy is this little carabiner, and it has this little, if I can get hold of it, quarter inch little screw here. I think it's quarter inch, maybe three eighths. And how that goes is it just goes here at the bottom here. Let's make these legs a little wider here. Last leg's always a pain in the butt to get out. There we go. So what happens here is this just literally goes right in this little hole here. That's it. So what you do with this guy is put a carabiner back on. And this is where you're going to put ballast weight on here. So once this is back in here, so if we take this down to the 55 degree level, you can see right here what this is for. This is to put ballast on here. So when you have, uh, you need to have more weight on this to keep this tripod more steady. That's where this goes. Now, again, that's more for your landscape guys is not as much for us. So I'm gonna just leave that on there for now. If I take it off, we're gonna go back out in the field. So that really is the main part of it. It also has another quarter inch little spot right here where you can put any other type of attachment. So if you got an arm for like a monitor recorder, like we talked about in a video recently, you can plug it in here or anything else you want for the arm. You can put this on here, have a cell phone, a GoPro, uh, another good use of that, I think, is like if you're shooting Aurora, you can have your main camera going on to do your stills, and you could have a, like a GoPro or another camera on this arm sticking off over here, doing live video of the Aurora or things like that, or recording yourself. But yeah, that is basically the tripod. Pretty simple, pretty nice. Uh, like I said, very light, very good to use. So let's move over to the gimbal. The gimbal is the one I was really wanted to review this tripod. So let's set this guy out of the way. All right, so this is the reason I was really excited to review this Leo photo, was this guy right here. This is the PG-1 gimbal. I've seen this one online, I've seen people review it, some other channels, and I thought this is cool. Um, it is not carbon fiber, it is actually aluminum. It is skeletonized here, it's got all completely cut out. And it's a little different setup and design than other gimbals. And what is that? Well, most gimbals, this knob here that does your movement for your lens to go up and down is normally here on the side and not on the top. Why do I like that better? And why I was excited about that? Well, because when you've got your hand up on the lens like you normally have it and actually i have it this way i'd have it this way if i was carrying it around this side's on my shutter this side's on my lens and it's usually sitting up here on top like that and when they're on the side you move your hand over here to the side and turn it when they're on this thing's on the top you're resting your hand right here on the top and it's literally just right there to tighten up or loosen up if you need to tighten it up to stay on a subject like you'll see here in the video in a bit when i'm uh got the subject i can actually tighten that up keep it on the subject and walk away from the camera to do something else and this point was retreating <laughs> getting out of the way letting these guys have their room but i could leave the camera recording on a subject which is really nice so you just a real quick clip the wrist so it's really nice uh about this guys talk about the make and the construction and all that's tighten this back down uh, it looks just like your normal game will except for the arm side which is skeletonized in aluminum and this one is camouflage this tripod, it actually comes in a kit with a tripod camouflage too, but the one they sent me was a black tripod with the camouflaged gimbal. This gimbal feels great. This is the best feeling gimbal that I've used so far. It feels really good. Uh, I used to have a Wimberley at one point in time when that's all there really was for as far as gimbals in a good professional quality. And I also have Benro carbon fiber. That's a really good, really solid one, but 
uh, what I noticed a little bit sometimes now, and if I don't get it tightened down and locked down and get this all these feet because they kind of come loose, this part little has a little bit of w wiggle to it, and I have to tighten it down every once in a while. This one so far, I've had it's just been a tank. It's just where it is is where it is. It's solid. These uh, levers to run them down. You can since it's skeletonized, you can actually see the bar that comes from the handle go all the way down. And up here, it doesn't go all the way down. It just goes behind the little Leo photo thing here. But like I said, this is really nice made. Uh, even the arm here that you can loosen to raise or lower the height of your lens, because sometimes you, when you're swinging this thing left and right, where it's the bottom is too low. And what will happen is you'll do that, and it will hit the bottom of your gimbal. So what you do is you raise it up. And this one I set at about 20. Get it back where it was. This set. So, how you set this? There's actually numbers here on the side. It's having all kinds of problems, aren't I? So you have numbers here on the height. So this one where I've had it set with my rig is 20. So you'll see right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's little numbers and little dials. So I just set that at 20. Lock her back down. All I do is do this little right here. That thing. You're locked down. Very simple. So to put your lens on here, it's Arca Swiss compatible, basically. So that's what this piece is right here. So all you do from this is you just, just like any other Arca Swiss, you loosen it down, tighten it down. Very simple. Next thing on this is really cool. And again, this is probably more for guys that shoot more landscape than me. And I don't, this, this thing I don't really, for me, I don't care about. I just tell you about it because here, it has a bubble level. So you can tell if we're level right now. So if you do need to know that you're level, I don't worry about that. I worry about my level in camera because even the camera I'm looking at right now, I've got the level set up and I can see that I'm level right now. Uh, and the next part we're going to look at is right here. So as we loosen this up, you can set this to zero if you want to, whichever degrees you want to. So if you are panning, and that's more, for, again, for landscape stuff, if you're, you've got your numbers here, if you can see them in the camera, and as you turn this guy, you can see which what the number is. So you can move it 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and uh, you know 330 if you want to go the other way. So if you do need a pan, oh, you need to do you know 60 degrees with a panning. You can see that you got 60 degrees of panning. Me, I don't care about it. Um, cool, cool feature. Uh, I understand why it's there, and but it has all those markings and everything. Uh, but again, this guy is made like a tank. Um, this is powder coated, it looks like to me. I could be wrong, but I do have one little chip in here where I did bang it pretty hard the other day. And uh, I think over time, maybe this uh, camo may wear out. I can see it's underneath it, the same color that this black is. It's just powder coated, but not a big deal, not a big deal. But this guy, like I said, I really like this. This is probably one of the better gimbals I've used. And we'll talk about if I found any flaws in this after this video when I went to Kodiak. Sorry, when I went to Nome, I didn't take this to Kodiak with me. And when I've been running around here in Anchorage in this area using this guy for. All right, so we'll go through the specs on this tripod and gimbal before we go back out in the field. Let me give you all those real quick. So, as I said before, that the tripod weighs 3.9 pounds. The gimbal weighs 2.2 pounds. So that puts us just around six pounds total for the whole rig. Nice. I had a few people that I saw here in town and they saw me out there talking to me and I said, hey, pick this up, you know, took the camera off. So what do you think about that? It's, well, it's pretty light. So everybody thought it was a pretty light rig for the size of it. They're expecting it to be a lot heavier than it was. But this is really nice. This tripod is super light for the size, for the size. It's, it's, it's a big tripod. This thing is sturdy. It doesn't wiggle, doesn't jiggle, none of that fun stuff. So stats on this again. 3.9 pounds, 2.2 pounds. It will fold out at base of 23 degrees, 55 degrees, and 85 degrees, almost flat. And it goes down to three inches. The height of this thing is just under, it's a touch under six feet, which is perfect. It's taller than I need it. Fold it up in its configuration is right here, 21 inches. Pretty nice. It will fit in most of your backpacks or on your backpacks really well. It's not going to bang you in the head like most of them do when they're too tall. So it's really nice there. It uh, has a removable ballast hook. That's what that little carabiner was for. It has rubber and metal spike feet that come in the bag. Really nice. It comes with that carrying case you saw before, which I really like it. Now, the legs are carbon fiber, and the twist locks are rubber. Now, I forgot to tell you a minute ago, why do you use carbon fiber over aluminum? It's not just that it's lighter, because there are aluminum that are pretty light, too. It's for the winter up here in salt water. So when you're shooting in the winter, you get a lot of frost on aluminum legs quicker. And what happens is you've got your legs extended 
when you're shooting aurora or stuff like that in the snow and you get done and you go to collapse it you can't it's stuck with a carbon fiber that doesn't happen also with carbon fiber legs you don't get as much salt water damage to your rig now you still have to watch all your little metal points are on here but just wash it with, with uh, salt, fresh water get that salt off you're good and that's why you use a carbon fiber over an aluminum frame for most of the stuff for what we do especially here in alaska one is the winter so you can close your tripod second is for salt water because i'm in salt water a lot around here because i'm on the coast all the time back to the settings on this guy uh the whole rig has a 55 pound max capacity great i'm not loading anything ever over 55 pounds so that really holds everything um, and that's pretty much it on the specs this guy making sure oh the price the thing you probably want to know the most about this thing okay in this configuration with the black tripod and the gimbal this guy's $8.99 if you get the black gimbal head and the black tripod it's $7.99 and you know, like I said it also comes in a full camo this will come in camo also and if that comes in camo this costs you $11.99 it's a little high, but this is a great tripod. We'll talk about the negatives and positives of fine at the end of this video. But uh, yes, it's not a real that expensive, but it's, it's a little higher end. But this is a higher end, the top end tripod and gimbal. So let's go back out in the field. And what we're going to do there, I'm just going to show you me using the field and with the moose, kind of the behind the scenes of me just going out and walking with the moose. And you can see the moose and their behavior and at the very end i got a really nice encounter at the very end with a nice bull so let's go do that and we'll come back and we'll talk more about what i think about this tripod
So what's happening here? I got this calf that's just way too curious, and he decided to walk right up to me, which is not good. Nope. You too. What I got going on, this calf, this little bull keeps pushing him, the calf keeps coming to me. And so I look like a little bull or cow or something. I don't know. So I'm gonna have to retreat down the trail a bit, so let's do that. So that's never fun. You got a curious calf and a curious little bull. It still wants to come my way. Hey, he's too close. Gonna have to move again. Play a game of retreat here. I don't know if I got a bull or a cow over here. So it makes these tripods really nice, especially these nice heavier ones with good gimbals. Like I'm recording right now, but I don't have to hold the camera. Just to check every once in a while. And if you get the balance right, how you get the balance is you undo it and you slide the camera back and forward and put front dips then you know you move the camera back to get the weight distributed. Once you get the weight distributed then you can do what I'm doing here where you can just move the camera where you need to move it, let it sit and get your recording so or your stills. Yeah so far this tripod has been really good it's pretty light We'll go over the specs in a bit, but it's really easy to carry over the shoulder and get moving. Again, peeking out that tree. Cute little bull, but he's cutting me off from where I need to be trying to walk. So once he lets me out, I'm going to head out of here and we'll go talk more about this uh, tripod and this gimbal, which has been fantastic. I used it while I was in Nome with the muskox, which is video to come soon. Ah, this thing worked great. It's, this tripod is really light. Now my rig's heavy, of course, but uh, this guy's three and a half pounds and this guy's is two and a half pounds so you're just under six pounds with the motor the tripod and the gimbal which is really nice pretty good weight you just tearing up that sign he's going to town that sign but 
Anyway, yeah, it worked really, really good for my stocks. Uh, I could lay it all the way down. This thing gets to about lower than like a little over three inches when it's flat, which is really good to be low on the ground. And then doing like I'm doing here, which is like I said, is really nice to got this thing balanced. You can set it where you want it like I'm doing here. If I need to move it a little bit, I can move it a little bit and let go and it's there where I need to have it. So a gimbal is a great thing to have for wildlife photography, especially if you're doing video, which I do a lot of video, as you know. He is just funny. Didn't have that sign. Like I said, once I can get done here, we'll go, uh, maybe we can find another moose for whatever, but, uh, Let's not start this. We are going to retreat for a second. I'll give them a second. I got a cow right here that just came up behind me. I got a bull down the trail. So the camera's recording. He's whomping and she's whomping. And we have romance here in a minute, but I don't want to be in the middle of it. I don't need to be a three way with these moose here. So we'll walk up here again a little bit. She's moving on. Better safe than sorry. She chugged off that way. I'm going to go to my camera and see where he's at. So, old girl, when I was sitting here, she just came up here behind me, where she came from. A little too close. She was up, 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 and he was up, 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 making those noises coming. So, that's so why we walked over there, you and me. And after a bit, they barked at each other, and she took off that way, and he's on the right side of the trail right now. Not in a great spot. So I'm gonna move a little bit, see if I can get a picture. This is a pretty good little bull here. So again, this is why it's good to have a gimbal and a tripod. I'm actually recording right now. That bull just sitting in the edge of that brush. So I'm recording right now. And I can maneuver, or if it gets a little dicey, I can leave that recording. And there she goes again. Oh, there's three, holy crap. Three cows. 
and that bull. That's why she ran off. Why you be really careful out here's moose. That cow that went behind me over here popped out over here bellowing and all of a sudden there was three cows stood up. They were better down I couldn't see them just over the top of the ridge and he came out. Uh, sorry it's three cows one calf and he keeps running that calf off. Now they've gone to brush over here so I don't know where I got two this way I got four this way so I gotta go that way because I cannot go this way anymore because they've scattered so may sit here for a little fewer minutes if they come back out but probably not so we're gonna oh maybe he's gonna come back out he's coming out I'll be done. So we did come back out, so I don't gotta go anywhere. And the calf that's with that cow is bedded down. So these bulls will fall around a cow that has calves that she may kick loose. He's got a little harem. He's got three cows, two calves, and then that one that went spooky that way. Yeah, I keep, I keep saying it. This is why you take a good tripod and gimbal out. Now, I'm using the small rig, which we had a little comparison a minute ago with them sitting next to each other. Small rig is really good for long hikes. The, little, the AP-10, AP-20. Love that one. I love it right here, what I'm using to record this talking head thing. But for this type stuff and this heavy brush, where I need to really be able to leave it and maybe use it for defense sometimes. Uh, I like the heavier stuff, and this one right here is really light. My Ben Rowan weighs twice as much as this rig, so it's really nice. Way down the hill, I think I got the cows and calves up here. I'll give them about five minutes, and I'll start walking this way a little bit until we get. So hoping I get a spot where I can put these legs out because it gets down to three inches with this thing as low as height. So maybe we can get that. But for now, it's a waiting game. So I'll talk to you here in a minute.
Well, what'd you think about that? It was a lot of fun. Anyway, that's kind of where the moose trip went really good. Now, after all that moose talk, and then of course we had the moose at the very end, which is gorgeous, good light set up. I could set up on him and even with the tripod, didn't have it really that low, but I could, she was up on a hill above me so I could actually get it where it looked like I was really low with the grass and everything, just set up perfectly with the gold behind him and everything, because it is fall here in Alaska. Review time on this guy. What are my final verdict and my final thoughts? I love this thing. This is the best tripod I've used so far. Um, that's saying a lot. I've had a lot of tripods. My Benro was my favorite as far as the big, heavy, nothing's going to move tripod. Take it out for Aurora. Take it out for stuff where I know i got to have a tripod. It's heavy. It's almost twice as heavy as this with the even though it's all carbon fiber also but it's a lot heavier rig that the top's bigger the even the carbon fiber is heavier than this guy for only by about a not quite a pound but the the tripod's a lot heavier so that's why i like this guy and it's stable it's thicker i like the twist locks on this guy they just barely turn them and they open that's just that's incredible uh, what you really hate is having to crank 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 you know all the time you want to get this thing open quick like I said, extremely stable. And that's gimbal head. This thing is fantastic. I love it. I, the tactile feel of it, it, it's solid. Where I'm at, when I put this thing, when you lock this thing in or loosen it up, you want it to stay. What I really like about it is if I just loosen it just a little bit, then this thing still has some good resistance to it. I get it loosened up just enough. So as I got this guy, you can see here, you can get it where it's at. So when you move your lens, if you want to move just a hair in a direction, even with this other one, you move it, spin it around, it will go there and stay there. The, the main advantage I think of this guy is when you lock your tripod down or get it set where you want it, you want it to stay there. And this guy just stays there, just locks in, just great. Um, some of the features, like I said, the bubble level and the degrees, those things I'm not going to use. I will use the ballast took from time to time. There's been time when it's just so windy, I had to put some ballast on there to keep it from shaking on the bin row, which was the best one I ever had so far. I've had some Manfrotto's, I've had, you know, other stuff. Uh, like I said, I've had the Wimberley, the Benro, and as one of the brand of these gimbals I had, but this one is fantastic. Just, just fantastic. That's about it, guys. If you like this video and you're enjoying the channel, like I always say, like, subscribe, do things like that so we can make more of those trips like out to Nome. All oh, those so much fun. I can't wait to show you that video. And from the Bears, went to Kodiak. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, the video uh, 8K subscriber winner, I'll announce it in the community post after this, so look for that later today, of who won the print with the eagles in the tree. I love that print myself. I actually need to print it off, put it in my office at work. But anywho, until next time, until the next video, guys, get outside and go run that shutter.